Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the city of Athens, or where the city of Athens would be and should be in this game, as it was a very large city with a lot of history and importance. However, they decided not to put it in, opting instead for Corinth. Athens was where the empress Ilia Eudocia, the wife of Theodosius II, who was the son of Ilia Eudoxia, that we spoke about in the previous episodes, was born. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, the Eastern Roman Empire and History. And just to clarify, I meant that Ilia Eudocia was born in Athens, not Ilia Eudoxia. However, there is just like everything else in this period, some historical confusion. Some people claim that Ilia Eudocia was born in Antioch, but I'm going to go with Athens because from my reading, it makes a lot more sense. Anyway, before we speak more about her, let's look at where we are in the game itself. So we have this army here in what used to be Verona, which is now desolate, and these two armies of rebels, western rebels, are too weak to do anything to us. I have made the sad decision that I'm going to escape from the western empire's lands, because if you look at the mini-map, and I thought I could make it bigger, but I guess I can't, I guess I can pull this map up, they are falling apart. They have this one province, they're about to lose their capital province of Milan. They have the southern part of Italy, this little smidge of Dalmatia, and they're currently about to lose Carthage to the Gaetulians. Their only real strong area is this area here, which is southern Spain, or Hispania, and northern Africa, what is now Morocco. But even then, these African tribes are becoming strong, so I am going to be moving my warriors here out against them. It's kind of a risk because if the Persians decide to attack, it would be great to have that army up here to help defend. But I do have my allies here, which can defend this stretch of land, and I have armies here. So I think it should be okay. And these guys will always be a problem unless I shut them down now. They become quite strong. Luckily for me, there are three separate tribes that they each own. Well, these own two territories, and this guy owns only one. The islands are lost, so what I might do also is get income by raiding. I don't know why all of a sudden I can't... There we go. Use my fleet down here to just raid and earn money for our nation. Since they're too small to really do much of anything else. There is a pretty big Western Roman fleet here, but it is currently losing troops due to attrition. And if you'll notice, there's just barbarians everywhere. The Western Romans are a lost cause. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do for them. I just have to try to escape. So the first step in that is to speak with Illyria. Because we are not the best of friends, but I'd like to get their permission to march my army through their territory. Well, we're okay, actually. We're neutral and improving. So let's see. The day's greetings to you. Speak, for you have my attention as the ear of the August people. Now, they are a Roman splinter state, so they are culturally similar to me, which is good because they are culturally intolerant. Let's see. Military access. Likelihood of success low. Well, I suppose pissing them off is not a huge problem, but I really would hope they would give it to me. I'm not going to waste any money on them, though. Let's see if I can add something to it. Trade agreement? What if we got rid of the military access? So they just don't like us very much. That's okay. We are just going to march through their lands. Because as we saw earlier... Moving to the south was kind of problematic for some reason. 
I can't sail out of the Western Roman towns, it looks like. So right now there's a huge army of Quadians, and they're back attacking Salona, and I'm in no shape to defend it from them. This force is only half of a force. What are these guys here? Those are Illyria as well. So I'm in kind of a spot, because if I march through their territory, it might make them mad, they might declare war on me, and then I have to deal with this giant navy here. Well, it's probably an army, yeah. And I don't know where exactly they're going. You know what? It may be best for me just to march down here. Back to the region around Sicily. And I could sail from there to Greece if I need to, but I just want to keep an eye on these guys. My army here in Sicily, it looks like they are actually ready to... Or the, the leader, the general, he's actually ready to go up. So what are you? You're a fearless warrior? Extra zeal will give you more integrity. And missile and melee damage for your own personal unit. That's not as good as just this, which will give you public order. Missile damage for infantry units, for ranged infantry units, armor. I don't know if I want to give that to this guy. It's a good thing to have, though. This guy actually will recruit people, so why not give him that? He's married to a well-connected woman, Porcia. Okay. We'll just march you around for a minute. All right, we have our priest down here. And he's going to have to stay here for a bit, still. Ooh, this general can raise up his skills, too. Excellent. I'm going to give you the bow. There we go. Now, what do we have with you so far? We can give you public order, which is helpful, actually, when you, we move you to the west. It'll also give you cunning, which will lower upkeep. I like that. But let's just take a look at morale. For recruits, though, we don't care about that. But this does give melee defense plus six for infantry units. This gives army recruitment capacity and melee defense plus six as well. And this gives replenishment. I want all of these things. Construction costs, I don't care about that so much. Hmm. I don't know. We'll get the public order, just because that'll help us in our next moves. So we are going to leave this region here with this army. Commander. Axum is still getting better, so I think that is a safe thing for me to do. I can convert this, which will definitely help. And I can improve this, which will... Wow, it'll greatly increase food consumption. Well, just by 10. Raise public order and give me wealth from culture. Actually, I don't need this anymore. Now that I have the reservoir. So we definitely don't want to upgrade that. Our sanitation is actually really, really good. So we don't need both of these things. Although this gives sanitation plus five. I'm going to wait till this is built, and then I'll turn this to something else. That's what I'm going to do. And we're pretty solid here in Ethiopia. I don't think they're going to rebel anymore. They're getting better. All right. Cilicia is not doing well. None of these places are doing well. I could spend the money to improve this, and we'll, that will improve public order. Let's do it. It's expensive, but it's necessary. Ever in service to Rome. And it's only going down by one. So we're actually going to move 
back to here. There we go. Now this place... Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. The thing is, the buildings that give you the best bonuses to public order are also the buildings that cause you to have Greek paganism. Oh, we can improve our wheat fields, though. That's not important here, but in the islands, that might be important. Oh, no, we only have sheep in the islands. Where's our wheat? I mean, our good wheat with high fertility. Egypt, okay. We may have to eventually convert the islands from sheep to wheat because they have the highest fertility. As you can see, fertility is good. Whereas it makes more sense to have wheat there since it's food production. Okay, this place... This will remove public order, but give me... Well, actually, I thought it would give me some money, but it doesn't really. It just gives wealth from commercial buildings. We'll have to improve this one next turn. I'll save the money. Alright, with Rufinus, the Picts are now guarding their city, so I'm going to go up here, actually, and try to raid this city, Ajax. I might be able to conquer it, actually. There's no troops there. Is there nothing else? We'll look and see. Alright, here's Arcadius. What does he have to deal with here? He has the East Germanic Separatists. And many of them. His army is almost fully taken care of, so let's take them out. To victory! Make haste, men. Wipe them out! Alright, we should crush them. So... They appear to have a ranged advantage. Let's auto-resolve aggressive. And hope that Arcadius comes out of it alright. Let's take a look. Yep. I knew it was going to happen eventually. He has a maimed arm, which now lowers the melee attack of his own personal unit by 10. That is really bad, and we definitely did not want that. We'll increase replenishment and research. That really stinks, because that means his personal unit right now is pretty much worthless in battle. The game just screws you over. Like, you you know that in the tactics of the time, they wouldn't just charge the Emperor in. But for some reason, when you auto-resolve a battle, even if you greatly outnumber the foe and you're much stronger, that's pretty much what they do. Except he didn't lose anybody. He's still a full unit of 120, so I don't understand how he got maimed, but so it goes. So now our melee attack is 6. I mean, it is really bad if you compare it to the 32 of our spearmen. 31 of our Comitatenses. I mean, even our archers have a higher melee attack rating than our Palatina guards. So that... That really stinks. This is now... He's now a worthless unit in terms of fighting on the battlefield. I guess he could defend. But he's not going to do any damage. Oh well. It happens. How can I serve the people of Rome? We'll get ready to see what these guys do. Either way, he did gain a level, so I guess that's acceptable. But dang. That's a huge negative. Negative 10? What are you going to do? Ready for battle. He could really use those. We're going to give him another unit of Comitatenses and another unit of... Brigands. Actually, that's not what I want to do. I want to select everybody. Okay. There we go. Okay, perfect. So at least now, Arcadius has a full force and another unit of cavalry. And you, now that you have your cavalry are going to move to the east, hopefully quickly, to get your troops over to our guy who's defending against the Parthians. Then you're going to go back and recruit more. That is your lot in life, Flavius Caesarius. 
This army's pretty decent, though, as it is. And this region is incredibly happy. Alright, that looks good. Oh, I have to pick research. How did I forget about that? Okay. So this will cost a bunch of money, and it will take away molded architecture, so I'm not really in a hurry to go for that. This will give us better fishing. This will give us better wheat and more wealth animal husbandry. And this will give us better industry, which we're not really investing a lot in right now. So I think this, as far as the civic techs, this is the one to go with right now. See, here's where, where we get kind of screwed. In order to get this plus one public order bonus, you need to have this. We'll get this last, though. And this will give us Metropolis. That's neat, but we're nowhere near there. And finally, this is what we really want, which will give us our Eastern Armored Legio. And also a negative 3% upkeep cost. But that's nine turns. We're not really there. Okay, so this... I need this in order to improve the leader units. the Basically, the Palatina Guard units. But to get this, I need to research first this and this. So it'll take forever to get to this. It's not really worth it. Now, if I research this, I would get recruitment cost of negative 5% across the board. I'm going to go with this first for the better wheat mills, and then I'll go to that, I guess. Oh, that's right. I think Eutropius died in Egypt. So Egypt needs a new governor. Okay. We have three candidates. You're a patron, which is good for money. You're a logistics expert, which isn't that good. And you're a taskmaster. Integrity is not necessary. Replenishment is not necessary. So patron's really the only guy. And he gets 10% from cultural buildings. So Gratianus, Sidonius, Valentinianus, you are now the governor of Egypt. Congratulations. Now, in case you were wondering what's going on with the family, I don't know why they're all blacked out like this. There we go. Our first son, Publius, at four years old, or four influence, four years old died, unfortunately. So now we have a second son, Secundus, and he is zero. He was just born, so we're kind of in a spot. Rufinus is still our heir. I really just have to keep Arcadius alive. He's such a good general, I don't want to take him off the battlefield, but I may have to do that. We have excellent control now that we've adopted this guy. Our dominion is okay. We could probably stand to adopt somebody else. Maybe Rufinus can adopt somebody. Maybe one of our governors. Vindonius Mus, the governor of Macedonia. Or the governor of Asia. He's the guy that's recruiting all of our... No, he's not. What am I saying? The governor of Syria. He has 85 influence. 43, 66. Alright, the governor of Syria seems like a good guy to adopt, actually. He has insufficient influence to adopt. Oh, that's too bad. But decrease that of your current adult son. So it'll decrease his loyalty, I guess. No, I want Rufinus to be the one who adopts. So I thought we had an Imperial Master of Horse. Oh, okay, this guy, yeah. We're promoting you. And all the rest of you guys. Five. You can be a master of soldiers. You can be a count. You can be a master of soldiers. You're nothing. You can be a count. Nothing. 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 Okay. So that's as far as we're going to go with our nation. And sorry we haven't spoken much about history. 
It's just been a lot going on. All right, an edict in Egypt. All right, so that's worth thinking about because Egypt is currently trending downward in public order. So we can do this, which will improve research and public order. Or we can do this, which will improve the influence of Greek Christianity. Or we could do this, which will improve our taxes, which is useful too. Or we can do this, which will improve food production, which is useful too. But right now I'm going to go with public order and research. All right, so some history to end the episode. Ilia Eudocia was actually born with the name Athenis, or as it's otherwise pronounced, Athenais. I guess it really depends. There's the current modern pronunciation of it in French is Athenais, but I think the ancient Greeks at this time would probably call it Athenis, very similar to Athena, the patron goddess of Athens, and also the person whom she was named after. Western Romans want us to attack the Langobards, and they will pay us a thousand for that, or declare war with the Langobards. We'll do that, sure. Athenes was the daughter of a man named Leontius, and he was a Greek philosopher and a teacher in the city of Athens. He was a wealthy man, and they had a estate on the Acropolis in Athens. Peace, honestly forged between men, is a worthy. That's fine. Peace is fine. And her father taught her quite a bit, and she was incredibly intelligent. She was also very mature. When her mother died, she ran the household for her father and her brothers, and this was around 412. She was born in around 400, 401, so she was only about 11, 12 years old at the time, and she was managing her entire household. All right, when one is climbing the greasy pole, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we'll have this guy call in some favors. That's fine. All right, everybody else got in. Excellent. So she was educated in the classical style very highly and comprehensively. She learned about all the epic poets. She learned about Socratic reason and dialogue. She learned about philosophy, rhetoric, and she was a skilled poet. And one other interesting fact before we end the episode is she was also raised as a pagan. It's not really going to impact her too much, as you'll see in the following episodes, but it's an interesting fact nonetheless, because at this period, while pagans and Christians are living side by side in the empire, Christianity is definitely on the upswing, and paganism is definitely on the downswing. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.